recording. Thanks for letting me know. All right, I wasn't recording that. We did get into the class a little bit late today, so I am uh, running the lab. Uh, we're talking about uh, <clears throat> lab module two, aseptic technique. And I will, oh, I don't have the, uh, the uh, syllabus open anymore. I'll remake the uh, lecture schedule, but the lab schedule is going to be running as it is in the syllabus. And we're doing lab module two. I'm repeating just a little bit for the uh, online class, and I'll come back to here in a minute. So let's go back. Uh, read about the objectives in lab module two. And you should know microorganisms are ubiquitous, and this makes a problem in the microbiology lab because we want to work with pure cultures. It was Louis Pasteur who came up with the technique of using aseptic transfers to minimize the risk of contamination. And he came up with a technique for obtaining a pure culture. In today's lab, we're gonna learn about uh, aseptic transfers and take a look at these pictures. These are how you use aseptic transfers. In order to use aseptic transfer, you need to sterilize everything you're going to be using when you're inoculating like a tube of media with cells. So we're talking about laboratory two exercise. In procedure one, you're gonna transfer sterile liquid using a pipette. The meniscus in a pipette or any glass container will not be flat. You read the meniscus at the bottom of the meniscus. All right, in procedure one, I'm going to talk about procedure one. I'll talk about each of the procedures. Uh, you're moving one mil of sterile water into nine mils of media. And then you use this table to uh, look at the results before you start the test and then after you've incubated the tube. And for procedure one, if the nutrient broth is clear, then no organisms are growing in the broth, and you can conclude that, that aseptic transfer was successful. When you're writing up the results and conclusions, you must use wording similar to this table. If, on the other hand, the nutrient broth is turbid, meaning hazy or cloudy, organisms are growing in the broth, and it's the organisms which are making the broth turbid, and you can conclude that, that aseptic transfer was unsuccessful. Any questions about any of that? All right, then you use these pictures for procedure one, procedure two, procedure three, and procedure four. And we have a picture, there it is, for picture, uh, procedures one and two, we're using this tube. This is what the tube looks like at the start before you've inoculated it with, in this case, a sterile one mil of water. And you can look and see if that's clear or turbid. And then you come down to this picture here and you see uh, procedure one, this tube here, and you can see whether it's clear or turbid. And that tells you in procedure one, the inoculum was a one mil of sterile water. And then answer these questions. I think on your worksheet, that'll be question zero. Let me double check that.
This looks a little smaller than normal. Come on. Either my mouse isn't working well or my computer isn't working well or the website's a little slow. Yeah, question number zero. Um, so describe the initial clarity of the nutrient broth prior to inoculating and scroll up for the picture, adding the sterile water or the paper disc and state whether it's clear or turbid. So those are your only two choices for this answer there. And then for procedure one, question one, describe the clarity of the nutrient broth after inoculating with sterile water in overnight incubation at 35 degrees C. State whether it's clear or turbid, and that will be from this picture right here. And then based on these results, what conclusion can be drawn? And to get the conclusion as well as the results, come up to this table. And if the nutrient broth is clear, the results and, well, the conclusions are here. And if the nutrient broth is turbid, then the re conclusion is here. And your wording must be similar to the wording in this table. Any question about any of that? And then list three sources of error with a septic transfer that could explain why the nutrient broth showed growth of microbes in the tube. And fill in each asterisk. Any question about any of that? All right, if not, let's move on to procedure two. In procedure two, we're transferring a sterile paper disc using cleaned forceps. And there's the technique of uh, procedure two. Use a septic transfer and transfer a sterile paper disc into the nutrient broth. And you'll note I never called it sterile forceps. To sterilize the forceps, you'd have to get them red hot in the bacto incinerator or a flame. And uh, you can't do that. Because forceps are all metal, and we'll try and pretend that these are forceps. If you were to put the pincers of the forceps and get them red hot, the heat would just move up the forceps, and then you couldn't hand, hold on to them. So what we do to uh, clean the forceps is you can put them briefly in the back to incinerator, but that doesn't get them red hot. And then what you do is you put them in alcohol and then put them back in the back to incinerator to light the alcohol. You can see the alcohol burning on the forceps. And that doesn't sterilize the forceps, but it does get them fairly clean. And then you use the forceps to pick up the sterile paper disc and put it into the tube of media. Any questions about that? And there's the procedure there. You can read about it. There's the media before we use, put it into the, the paper disc into it. And then use this table for what your results are, to get your conclusions. And there's the uh, tube for procedure two. After it's been inoculated and incubated in the incubator for 24 hours. And there you can actually see the paper disc in the bottom of that tube. And then answer the questions for question number two. Describe the clarity 
of the nutrient broth after inoculating with the sterile paper disc and overnight incubation at 35 degrees Celsius, meaning is it clear or turbid? Based on these results, what conclusion can be drawn? And pull those from the table. Any question about procedure two? All right, if not, let's move on to procedure three. In procedure three, you're transferring serratia marsens to a broth. Remember, a broth culture is a liquid culture. In procedure four, you're transferring serratia marsens to an auger slant. A slant is a solid culture. For procedures three and four, we have a little video demonstrating how to correctly transfer from a bacterial stock culture to sterile broth and a sterile auger slant. So watch that video. And you should note some important notes about this video. You only need to watch the video to four minutes and 23 seconds into the video. And then you can stop watching the video. The bacterium being used in the video is E. coli, which is a uh, unpigmented bacteria. However, in procedures three and four, we are using serratia marsens, which is a pigmented bacteria. There is one error in the video and you can hear it between three minutes and five seconds to three minutes and 20 seconds. You can hear some sizzling when he puts the loop into the E. coli and you might look for that error and try and figure out what that error was. So in procedure three, we're transferring serratia marsens, the cells, into sterile broth. The cells, when they're grown in a solid culture, which is where we're going to pick them up from, they will be a bright red color. But when you grow them in a broth, the cells will be a pinkish color. And I assume that it's pinkish just because you're getting the color of the media and the uh, cells in the broth. Growing things in a broth cultures is problematic because it's difficult to determine if contamination has occurred because all the cells will mix together. Meaning, if you had major contamination, you would probably notice that the pink color would be very slight or absent. Or if the contamination is another color, uh, let's say yellow is the contaminant, and then you have pink, so that the color would be orange. You might notice it if you had major contamination in the broth, where the contaminant was more numerous than the cells that you were supposed to be growing in the broth, which are pink. But if you have minor contamination, where the cells of interest are the majority and the contaminant is the minority, you may not detect that contamination. Any question about any of that? So just a note to be careful of, and that is when you're growing things in broth, it is difficult to determine whether you have a contaminant or not. The exception being, unless it's a major contaminant, where the contaminant is more numerous than the cells of interest. This is the procedure for procedure three. I'll let you read about it. Use this table for procedure three. If the nutrient broth is clear, then you can assume no organisms are growing in the broth. A septic transfer was unsuccessful. Why was the aseptic transfer unsuccessful here? Anyone? Well, think about that. That will be a question later on in the, the lab. And then in procedure three, if nutrient broth is turbid, you can assume organisms are growing in the broth 
and a septic transfer was successful. For procedure three, we have the tube right here. And then come down to the questions. So number three is for procedure three. Describe the clarity of the nutrient broth after inoculating with serratia mersens in overnight incubation. Was the tube clear or turbid? And there's the results there. Based on these results, what conclusion can be drawn? Once again, your conclusion must have the wording or similar wording to what's in the tube, uh, in the table. And if your wording isn't similar, I will tell you the wording has to be similar. So you're getting a partial deduction. Now it only needs to be similar. It doesn't have to be the exact wording. Uh, and then how do you know whether you have transferred the correct micro? Serratia Marsens. How do you know in this case? Anyone know? All right, think about that. That's obviously a question you need to answer. For procedure four, you're transferring serratia marsens into a slant. When serratia marsens grows on solid media, serratia marsens will be red in color. Contamination can be more easily detected in a slant than in a broth because what you do is you, to grow the bacteria on the slant, you take a loop and then you streak in S-like movements on the slant. And let me blow this up. So if you have a contaminant growing off the slant, like right here or right there, well, that's pretty obvious that's a contaminant because it's not growing where you streaked. Another thing you can notice with a contaminant is if the streak is red in all sections, except for this one area here, where it's some other color, then that would be a contaminant right there. Any question about any of that? All right, so here's the procedure we use uh, for engaging in procedure four. Once again, use this table for making your conclusions. If the slant does not show uh, confluent or colony growth, no organisms are growing on the slant, an aseptic transfer was unsuccessful. If the slant does show confluent or colony growth, the organisms are growing on the slant, an aseptic transfer was successful. For procedure four, we're going to use that tube here. And you can see that when serratia mersens grows on solid media, it is very red in color. And you have so much growth that you don't see the streak anymore. You just see a whole blob. Uh, but the edge of the auger is not growing bacteria. And the whole center of the tube where you did the streak is growing bacteria. So for, for procedure four, answer these questions. Is there bacterial growth on the slant? Simply answer yes or no. Uh, how do you know? And then uh, for four or C, does it appear to be the bacterium you inoculated or a contaminant? And that, I think, is it for uh, the worksheet. Let me make sure I didn't miss anything. I should have moved over to here when I was going through the questions. Yep, that's it. Uh, so I'll be here to answer any questions till about eight o'clock. Uh, if you need help, I'm here. If you did not notice, I've got lab zero and lab zero one graded. 
and some of you could have used my help on those labs. There were a few students who got 100%, but the majority of you did not. And some of you need to think about the question and think about your answer. Uh, because obviously any answer is not correct. You must have a correct answer to get uh, full credit on the labs. All right, any questions? If not, go ahead and get started on the lab.